In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to set up a start screen menu in Unity and use a basic menu manager script to switch from scene to scene. In my Unity project file, I have a chicken game that I've been working on, and this is the main game scene known as chicken. Now what I want to do is add a start screen scene. So this is going to be a scene that includes all of my menu options, and I'm going to call this menu screen. The menu screen scene is going to include buttons that the user can press to start the game or exit the game. Now, I usually don't like to work with the skybox on. You can toggle that on and off and along with other options. I'm just going to toggle the whole thing off so that way I have a nice clean blank area to begin working on my menu. Over in the hierarchy window, I'm going to go under the UI elements and add a canvas game object. This canvas game object will give us a drawing space and it will also give us an event system. And this event system basically tells Unity that we're going to look for input from the user in order to activate certain elements that are in the canvas. On the canvas game object, we're going to add another UI game object and this one is called panel. The panel is basically a two-dimensional game object. It's sort of like a plane in the environment. I'm going to change my perspective view to isometric view. This will give me more of a straight on look at my panel environment for where my menu elements are going to be. Right now I'm on the front and we may need to change that later on. The panel is essentially a rectangle. There's some transform options that we'll talk about later. Under image component, you have a default background. And this image is just the plain image that you can use for your panel. I actually have another image in my images folder. It's a screenshot of my chicken game and you can do this as well. Any type of image that you want to add to your panel, you want to make sure that the image is a texture type of sprite, 2D, and UI. That will allow it to be used on the panel in our canvas. So making sure that my image is all set and ready to go, I'm going to go back to my panel game object. This time I'm going to take my image and drag it into the source image property on the image component. And there you can see my image. However, it's backwards. So I'm just going to change my view using the orbit tool a little bit. And we're going to go to the back side of that two dimensional panel and take a look at it from that view. Now it looks a little dark, so I'm going to change my color. And you might think color is a weird place to do this, but there's actually a transparency element at the very bottom of your color toolbar. And if I change this one direction or the other, it'll actually bring the color out more or fade it into the background a little bit. And you may want to fade your image a little bit, but not as much as the default was. So I'm going to close my color tool now for my image, and we're going to begin adding some buttons, but first, I'm going to go back to my panel game object and right click and add an empty game object. And the reason I'm doing this is because I may want different menus. I'm going to call this menu the start screen menu. So I'm going to add start screen in there for my rename. And we'll add each of our buttons for the start screen under that game object. Again, looking at the UI game objects and selecting on the button game object. So here we have our first button under the start screen game object. We're going to call this button play and this will be our play button. And you can see that there's also a text game object that has also been added to the button automatically. Over in the inspector window for the play button, we have an anchor option. And if you select that anchor option and go to the far bottom right option, select that and that will make sure that whenever we use our rectangle tool up here in the top left that our text and our button rectangle will stay the same so that text will stay in the center of our button so make sure to change that anchor position before you start scaling and resizing that rectangle tool uh, transformation now let's take a look at the text that's on the button Selecting the text game object, I'm going to go over to the text component and we'll change that to play. And we have some font options down here. We can change it to bold, italic. I'm going to leave it as regular or normal right now. 
Uh, I don't want to apply any special effects to it just yet. I'm also going to change the font size. It's a little small for me, so let's make it a little bit bigger so that way it's easier for the user and the player to um, see it. And you might be able to just play around with the numbers a bit on the font size until it looks the way you want. Also with the alignment, I'm going to make sure that it's centered horizontally and vertically. And uh, we'll take a look at the color down here of our text in just a moment. First, let's go back to our play button. Not the text, but the button game object itself. You have a number of different color options under the button component. So I'm going to take a look first at the normal color. I want my normal button color to be sort of like this light bluish, um, sort of, you know, middle ground kind of blue uh, for the entire button itself when it's in a normal state. So I'll change that on that color tool, and then we can take a look at some of the other different state colors. So we have highlighted color. So whenever somebody is like hovering their mouse over the button, I want that to be the same shade of blue, but slightly lighter. So it'll just give it kind of like that highlight effect. And then uh, for the pressed color, when they actually click on the button, I want it to be the same color as that blue, the original blue on my button, but I want to make it just a little bit darker. So I'll change it to make it just a, a, a tad darker than the original blue. And then let's take a look at the selected color. I want that to be just the same blue that it is on the original color. So I'll select that um, color tool again and change it so that it's the exact same blue that's in the original state for my button. And I'm pretty happy with that. That looks good. However, the text is a little dark on that blue background. So uh, let's resize our button just a little bit here and then go back to the text game object. And now we'll take a look at the color of the text itself. So selecting the color property here, I'm going to change this to white because I think white looks a lot better on that darker background. And we'll leave it as that. So white with that bluish background behind it. You'll find that I have a fonts folder as well. And inside here, I've added all kinds of font files. These are just regular font TTF files. You can drag them over to the font property in the inspector on your text game object. And that'll change it to whatever that font style is. My font style there actually made it a little too high. So I'm using the transform tool now to kind of drag that text game object down just a bit to kind of center it just a little bit better on the button. Now that I have a play button, I can right click on the play button game object and duplicate it to create my other two buttons that I need. This will let me make my options button and also my exit button for the player to use when they're on the start screen menu. As I add each one of these new buttons, you can see that I'm using the transform tool to make sure they're centered appropriately. Now that I have my three buttons for the start screen menu ready to go, I also want to add the game title to my start screen. So let's collapse the start screen game object and then I'm going to right click on panel and add another UI game object called text. This is just a plain text game object. I'm going to change the name of my game object to title so I know that that's what the text is. And it's really dark. You can see it. it's in the middle of the start screen menu there. I'm going to change the font so that it matches the same font that I used on the different buttons. And also let's change that color to white because I think that looks really good and stands out against that dark background. Closing the color tool, I'm now going to go ahead and change the text to the game title. Make sure that it's centered vertically and horizontally. And then I'm going to move it to where I want it on the screen. Let's also make it larger, so I'm going to change the font size to um, 82, something along those lines, and also use that rectangle tool again in order to transform the size of my rectangle so that all of those letters show up. Now we need to add some functionality to our start screen menu, so I'm going to select the start screen game object. And since that's where all those menu buttons are held, I'm going to add the menu manager script to the start screen game object. I want to make sure that I add it to that parent game object of start screen. So the menu manager script allows me to use some different functions for my buttons. So selecting the play game object, 
scrolling down in the inspector, we'll find an on-click list is empty area. If you select the add button or the plus sign, you'll find that it lets you add a function to that specific on-click event. In order to make our functions from the script appear in that dropdown, we need to drag the start screen game object to the target. Using the drop down menu, you can now see a variety of functions that are available to you. The last option is the menu manager. This is a list of all the functions that are included in that menu manager script that you added. You're going to be adding a function called play game. So under menu manager, find play game, select it, and you'll see that menu manager dot play game function has now been added to the play game object button. We're going to do the same thing for the exit button. We'll leave the options button alone for the time being. So we need to remember that we have to add our start screen game object, which is where our script is housed, to the target object before we can begin adding the function. And that will allow the menu manager script to show up in the drop down menu. This time we're going to select quit game. The quit game function doesn't work when you're in play mode. It only works when a game has been exported or built and published. More about that in a moment. In order for our play button to open up our game scene, we need to go to file and build settings. This will allow us to add our different scenes to an index. Adding the menu screen scene, it has now given it an index of zero. The script says that when the play button is selected, it will jump to whatever the next index number is. So let's go to scenes and we're going to open our chicken scene. That's the game. Let's first save our menu screen scene. And now with the chicken game scene open, we can now add that under build settings to our scenes in the build. The scene has to be open in order to add it to this list. You can see that the chicken game has an index of 1. So now when the play button is selected, it will add 1 to the current scene's value, which is 0. So 0 plus 1 gives us the next scene index, which is a value of 1, advancing it to the chicken game. Let's now test out the play button in play mode. So here's our menu, and you can see the highlight effect works really well. We get that light blue. Selecting the play button does, in fact, send us over to the chicken game scene. So it works as intended. Exiting play mode, we'll now try out our exit button. So let's open up the console window down in the project window area. And we're going to click the play button again to enter play mode. Now remember, when we select the exit button, the only way we'll know that it's working is when it shows up in the console. And that's because the exit button, that function, doesn't actually work in play mode. And we can see it says exited game in the console. Now it's your turn to set up a start screen menu for your game project.